Hey everybody, welcome back to Blender 3.3 New Hair Series Episode 5 and today we're going to be covering, we're going to continue covering the basic hair tools. So let's cue the intro and um, get started. Alright, with that out of the way, let's quickly start covering the next couple of tools. So you can see here that I've got this new hair groom and you might have noticed that as we keep going through the uh, series you'll start to see increasingly complex hair grooms being created with each episode and my goal is that little by little with each episode you get a little closer to being able to create more and more complex hair grooms. But before we get to all the complicated stuff we gotta get through the basics. So let's start talking about the next couple of tools on the basic tool set. So before we get started let's quickly add a single hair groom like that and let's look at the grow shrink tool the grow shrink tool has a couple of settings just like every other tool we have the radius and the strength pretty basic we also have something called the direction which just says add and subtract a scale uniform value as well as a minimum length value we also have the basic stroke settings fall off settings and the cursor thing which we never talk about we also have uh, the symmetry symmetry setting let's just try to edit this one single super long hair but before we do that let's just add a little density to it so that we can see what's happening properly and this gives us a little bit more visibility okay and so the growth shrink tool obviously we can adjust the radius and the strength using the methods I told you F and shift F but if I just use it as it is okay you'll see that what's happening is right now I'm on projected mode and it's just going to increase the length of grow the length of the hair if we were to switch to the subtract which is changing the polarity of the direction now as I click it's gonna reduce the length of the hair let's just reduce the length of the hair for a second take our snake hook now in the old system if you were to sort of scale the hair you could increase the length and decrease the length but the way the way it will work with the grow and shrink is actually it'll follow this part and check this out as I decrease the length of the hair um, using the subtract mode you'll start to see that the hair is actually sort of following it's making sure that it follows the shape this is really helpful compared to the previous now I'm just gonna undo that okay and we're gonna do an add now add doesn't work this way necessarily it tries to sort of adhere to this shape a bit but there's only so much extrapolation it can do so it's kind of following a little bit it's starting to break down a little bit now if you did want the old behavior if you wanted just to shrink or like just to scale it uniformly like this this was the old behavior you can actually enable the scale uniform in case that's what you wanted or decrease the size by the way by pressing control you can automatically switch between the add and subtract so that's what the scale uniform does it just allows you to do this but generally speaking we don't want that now we also have something called minimum length which is quite useful now as I keep shrinking this it will shrink up to a point which is the minimum length you can see here which I've set let's undo everything I just did and increase this minimum length to something like 0.6 as I keep shrinking this it will shrink until it reaches this minimum length that's what minimum length does it just shrinks the hair until it reaches this specified minimum length the minimum length is specified in absolute units uh, so in this case it's 0 0.6 meters it really depends on the size of your model and this is really useful if you want to for example make sure that you you can scale or decrease the length of the hair but you don't want to affect it below a certain point let's just say for example the beard you don't want the beard to be too thin so you just scale it up to a minimum level to make sure you don't sort of scale it into oblivion and that's pretty much all the settings there is for grow and shrink shrink now let's move on to the next setting which is pinch when you look at this clump of hair you can see that it's kind of closely together here and then spreads out over at the tips and the pinch doesn't have any settings other than the radius and the strength it just has the other fall off and stroke pinch actually will forces the hair together you're pinching it into sort of a, a strand do you see that and see what we got here maybe we can pinch it this direction you can you can immediately imagine a kaleidoscope of situations where this is useful especially for manual grooming this is amazingly useful pinch has its limitations in the sense that a lot of the time you, you don't want to clump hair like this manually for the entire hair groom that would be 
a nightmare but this is really useful for sort of creating this manual pitching effects okay and it's really strong so you gotta be careful so when i put it at max strength it's it's so powerful it just destroys the original shape so you want to keep the strength pretty low even though the settings are not given here the pinch actually has a plus and minus setting over here which it's kind of like unpinch you know that's the best way to describe it, it just unpinches the hair I think we have time for one more and that is the puff tool to explain the puff tool i'm going to create a new situation i've created this new situation where we have this sort of weird strand sticking downward and it's kind of falling down this will help us understand what the puff does now puff settings are it doesn't have any settings it doesn't it only has radius and strength pinch for example we had a plus and minus but here there's nothing really at all the puff tool the way it works is it's just gonna sort of make these hairs stand up watch as I keep pressing I'm just tapping with my pen it's just causing the hair to sort of stick upward let's just undo this why is it doing this well what is happening here well the hairs are sort of trying to adjust to the normals of this face okay so let's just quickly demonstrate that with a diagram or something so okay so I've di I, have, I have this diagram here which will help you understand so basically it's not a diagram it's just a sphere shaded flat and there is this curvy sort of single strand of hair which I've made a little thicker than usual and I'm going to draw on it over here you can see what you're selecting here is a single face this is one face and this is another face and you have different different faces and so on okay if I were to draw a single line that points out in this direction you can see here this arrow that's the normal so that's the normal and basically what this brush is doing and every single face it has a normal what it's trying to do is it's trying to align the hair with the normal that's what it's doing so it's pushing it upward and aligning it with the normal and you can see it's the more harder I press the more straight it's going to become and eventually it'll be perfectly aligned with the normal now remember the normal I told you it comes out from the middle of this face but really sort of interpolating between all the faces so the normal over here will be over here it might be like this here it might be like this here it might be like this and so on it'll just point outside of the surface based on the face and the direction it is and there's a normal point everywhere on this sphere so it's just going to try to align based on where it is and that's how the puff tool works so back in our example what we're doing is as we press this we're simply trying to align these threads with the normals of this head but it does it incrementally so that's why we still have this shape that's the puff tool that's it there's nothing more to it than that so i think that's enough for this episode um, thank you very much for watching so far there's still quite a lot more to cover we're almost through the basic tools once we cover smooth and slide we're pretty much through all the basic tools there's a couple of menu settings that we gotta understand before we move into more advanced um, geometry stuff and other things like that so thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one